Hey everybody, what's going on? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different World Vlog. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today and if not, I hope it gets better for you guys and if so, you gotta manifest, plan, and prepare for it. That's how it's gonna get better for y'all. Um, so today, getting right into it, I hope you guys are ready because we have, I want to share with you guys uh, my audio interview I did with the podcast Fly With Us uh, with Lady Bounce and Picket Fence. I like their names. <laughs> it's dope. Um, did this a while back. You know, had a very good time talking with them, of course, promoting my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, as well as just, you know, shooting a breeze, talking about everyday life and, you know, my background story and listening to theirs and how, you know, we as a society can change as a whole. So definitely great conversation that we had and I definitely want to share with you guys. So here it is. Check it out. And once it gets done, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And then come back with your girl and learn about what's going on in Difference World. Yeah? So here it is. Check it out. Bing! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about what if. Big question, big word, big thoughts. Pick your fence, what you got for us? Uh, the mindfulness minute today. I am an expression of the divine. Just like a peach, just like a fish is. I have the right to be this way. We will never have to be other than who we are. We are to be successful. We realize that we are, as ourselves, unlimited and experienced and valid. The second part to that is, a man can be great as he wants to be. If you believe in yourself and you have courage and determination and dedication and competitive drive, and if you are willing to sacrifice little things in your life and pay the price for the things that you are, think are worthwhile, it can be done. Wow. That was, that was pretty powerful. So, Sir Pinky, would you like to introduce our guest this week? So, our special guest today is a brilliant author. Her name is Different from Houston, Texas, who has a great book that we're going to talk about today. And afterwards, I hope you put it in your cart and get it. Fire it up. Well, I already added it to my cart, and I'm going to get it when I get paid. But you know, you know how that is. My checking account, my savings account. You know, they got to talk to each other and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Miss Different, tell us who you are. Yes, thank you, Queen, Lady Bounds, K hey, Picket Fence. Thank you guys for having me on your show. Yes, my name is Different, so D I F E R N T. Um, like they said, I'm from Houston. I'm 30 years old. I'm so happy and excited to be on you guys' show and uh, sharing my story with y'all, along with my new book, What If? Controversial Paradigm Shift, as well as just talking with you guys about you know, self-care and self-love, which is what we're all about here at Barrett High Entertainment, LLC. So, um, yeah, let's get this party started. Definitely. Okay, so, so you survived the pandemic like the rest of us. Tell us how you survived it. Um, God, food. <laughs> journaling, um, finding something to do, <laughs> staying busy, um, uh, a myriad of things, trying not to go crazy because me, I'm a, I, I'm, although I'm considered an introvert, I love to be out and about within my to travel by myself, if you will, but I love to be out and about. So being um, stuck in a house, uh, for me, uh, added on to my depression. I was already depressed before, but it added on to it. And um, being in therapy beforehand, talking with my therapist and just working through some things, he encouraged me to de uh, get back into one of my hobbies, which is writing and journaling and doing a lot of meditating and, and writing affirmations. And so uh, that's how it came about. So what's your favorite affirmation? I got so many. <laughs> um, let's see. Can't put me on spot like this. Okay. Make them any. Uh, let me let me get back to you. Um, I try to look for a quote. I think what I just tell when I wake up and tell myself, I, I'm thank you God that I woke up. I'm blessed, mm -hmm. you know. And then thank you for allowing me to see another day and keeping me covered. And, um, with this this year, um, or previous with the pandemic, um, because of it, 
I've lost four people this year alone. And so this year has been so humbling for me in, in, in the sense of just holding on to people that I love and cherish and just open my eyes, you know, to that, that saying that, that's really true, here one day, gone the next. And four people for me just this year alone, I had to say goodbye to and it's still not registering. And so it's, it's pertinent for me to constantly monitor my self-care and my self, my, my mental health and where this you will and keep it in check because if I don't I'll go back down the road self-destruction which I was before and, and I'm so grateful for that uh, getting my mental health in check because it allowed my self-care to you know blossom take but, um, Hard up. so let's yeah. let's talk about um you were talking about depression before let's talk about your background um we were reading your bio and it's a very interesting story so um, let's dive into that. Tell us about you pre-pandemic. Okay, well, taking it back to, I guess, my, my childhood coming up. Um, like I said, I grew up in Houston, but I, I moved all over due to the fact that um, around the age of 11, I ended up homeless and on the streets with my family. And we literally moved around everywhere from pillow to post, um, sleeping in cars, parks, shelters, bus stops. You know, at one point we slept at a crack house. And um, it wasn't until the time I turned 14, I was seeking a place to foster care by a relative. And for the first six months of being in foster care, I tried my hardest to come home. However, I found out that if you stayed in foster care and you aged out, the state of Texas would pay for those who aged out their tuition fee waiver to college. And so right then and there, I decided to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just stay in Dugato's four years at CPS. And by the time I finished that, um, I had ended up going to Sam Houston State University. So shout out to all the bad cats, eat them up out there in Huntsville. Um, and within that opportunity, I was, I was blessed. I ended up starting my own student organization titled Pay It Forward, uh, to where we dedicated, you know, volunteering, educating, and mentoring kids that were in foster care as well as the youth in general. Uh, a part of our education team is where we went to different high schools speaking with the youth about the importance of education. And that is where, you know, the seed of the book was planted for me to start doing motivational speaking, if you will, and I would share my testimony with the other kids. Um, a lot of them would come and tell me towards the end that they were inspired by what they heard. Um, also, I joined a business fraternity. I'm a member of Phi Chi Theta a Business Fraternity. Also, I had the chance, I was blessed with the opportunity to study abroad in South Korea, Kim Young University, and within that opportunity, uh, I traveled to eight other different countries, and so that's where my travel bug was born, and um, by the time I finished college, I en ended up with uh, my master's, excuse me, my bachelor's degree in international business. I also have two, uh, excuse me, minors in economics and business communication, as well as I have my master's degree in entrepreneurship. I'm also a Texas real estate agent. Um, now I'm a newfound author and a CEO of my own business, Third Eye Entertainment. So although my story started in tragedy, it's going to end in triumph because that's the way God planned it. That's the way he, he made it. Every step, you know, for me being secretly placed in foster care, it, it was his plan to forget what happened. And now, thus far, fast forwarding, you know, I've gotten an opportunity to travel uh, to just about 50 different countries, you know, seeing the world experience in different cultures and meeting new people, you know, that's only by God's grace. But as, as many of you, as, and I'm sure as you're listening, you're thinking like, wow, that's all great and fine and dandy. But the truth is, with all those accomplishments and, and not just under my belt pickets, I, I was still dying on the inside. I was dead. You know, I looked good on the outside, but I was dying on the inside. I was, I was, uh, you know, you heard of Robert Williams and Anthony Bourdain. Um, if I didn't get my mental health in check, I would have been, I would have been just like this. You know, one of those people you think that has it all, they're so happy they have everything, but in the end, they take it all away. You know, it's, they're not happy. And that's very, it's a very true statement when they say money and materialistic things does not buy happiness. That's very true. I've been on, you know, beautiful islands and, you know, I'm, I'm laying in my bed, you know, crying because I'm all by myself and having everybody share with me. So that's a very true fact and statement that, you know, money does not buy happiness. And so you can't base your happiness off of that other side of things. Um, now, what, what forced me to face the ugly truth about, you know, myself that I needed to go and get my, my mental health in check was, you know, when I squandered an opportunity that I had in my adulthood. 
and it allowed me to see that um, my issues from my childhood trampled over into my adulthood and was messing me up. Um, like I said, coming from that environment where I was, you know, being on the streets for years, to me, you know, it may sound you know, funny to you, but somebody can relate out there, but me, chaos was considered normal, if you will. And so when I got taken out of that situation and placed into CPS, I was actually placed into good thoughts to do good school districts. However, for me, I just felt it was too good to be true. I didn't deserve it. Eventually, you know, all good things come to an end. So I just got that mindset that, you know, I'm the captain of the ship. I decide when it's time to go down. And so I, I gained that sabotaging type of reputation so where I would push people away, you know, get that, that reputation that was hard to deal with. And that those traits stemmed over into my adulthood. And like I said, it was a situation to where I had a meeting with, you know, the person who could have opened up many doors for me however dealing with you know those demons in the back of my head telling me you know I'm not good enough for this I'm too ghetto I'm too country they're not gonna like me um I purposely showed up late to a meeting that they had set up for me and it left a sour taste in their mouth and to this day it's been about good seven years now since that passed but um I, I, I regret that to this day but it wasn't until that situation happened that it forced me to realize in the basic of the truth that I needed to go fix my issues. What I went through in the past, it wasn't my fault. It was out of my control. But somehow, some way, it's my problem to deal with. It's on me as an adult to fix those issues, whatever issues that's plaguing me and holding me back. And so once I did, it was like the weight of the world was just lifted. I was free as a bird. You know, it didn't happen overnight. <laughs> you know, it take it took time process. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I'm so glad I stuck with it because, you know, for two years now I've been, you know, consistently in therapy and I'm proud to say that I'm not ashamed or embarrassed to say that anymore, if you will. A lot of the times, you know, us, you know, black people in, in the culture, if you will, we, we have, we play with that, that notion that black people don't do therapy or we don't go tell our business, you know. Some of uh -huh. us do people, but what goes on in this house stays in this house. So it comes up and see your daughter for me. I wasn't ashamed or embarrassed. It just, like I said, coming up with that, that mindset, it's not nobody's business, you know? And so, but keeping all that being bottled up inside you, it eats away at you. And then eventually, if you don't get help, if you don't take care of it, it's going to lead you down a path to self-destruction. So that's just what I did. I had to take control, you know, being the, the type of soldier that I was coming through, all that I had overcome, that was just the battle of my life right then and there. And I had to just say... <clears throat> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the captain of the ship. <laughs> I'm going to decide where to steer it now, when it's going to go down. And so um, going to therapy and talking to my therapist and, and doing so for three years, this is what happened. And I just want to take this time to say anybody out there listening who's going through, you know, any type of emotional distress, any type of depression, being bullied, having suicidal thoughts, understand that it is okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Find out a plan of action, you know, to where to direct your life in a positive manner. Otherwise, it's just going to self-destruct. Whatever you went through in life that's plaguing you, understand that, you know, it may or may not be your, your fault. It may, it may not be out of your control, but somehow, some way, it's your problem to deal with. And as an adult, it's on you to fix that issue. Whoever hurt you in the past, don't expect that it will come back and make amends, but now it's on you. And so... Um, with that being said, <clears throat> talking with my therapist and him encouraging me to get back into one of my hobbies, which is writing um, and, and meditating and praying and learning about chakra healing and, and astral projection, um, and being stuck in the house <laughs> during the pandemic. Um, May 25th, 2020 happened, the day George Floyd died. And so um, being, him being from Houston, we're both from the same place, we were, um, we were basically right down the street from one another. I wanted to get involved in the protests and you know, have my voice being heard, even attend his funeral. However, when the point came down to it, I couldn't because I wanted my voice to be heard. And just in that moment in time, I wanted, to, wanted it to be heard long after I'm gone. You know, and so uh, going home later on that night, just praying and talking to God and asking for the spirit of discernment and, and the him showing me the way this is what he revealed to me, you know, through dreams, through little messages and conversations with people and even, you know, watching movies such as The Help and uh, Alma Saturday with other movies, you know, that, that helped, you know, conjure up these ideas. Um, 
this is what came and day by day I started writing in June 2020 uh, what if this what if that happened what if this you know I would take little scenarios that actually happened in our culture in our past and just flip it reverse and you know flipped it and actually you know what would happen you know if this was happening to your people instead of ours and um, so I started doing this in 2020 of June and finished in December 2020 and I take it to my lawyer and lock her to read the manuscript and she gets back with me and says I think it's going to do well a quick question what's the name of your business and so this is where I have to hit the ground running and just realize that it's more than just a book now you know don't ask for something and don't be prepared for when you pray when it comes to you so now um, I have to come up with an LLC to to market my product to the public and so that is where Third Eye Entertainment LLC was born in March 2021st of this year and um, what Third Eye ENT is about is a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. Uh, we offer motivational speaking services as well as um, travel blog as well, and as well as a YouTube channel. Uh, we talk on issues uh, of in today's society that consider taboo and often swept under the rug, uh, including injustice, systemic racism, uh, domestic abuse. Uh, we just uh, September just passed, and so we just did a, a segment on suicide prevention awareness, as well as we talk about uh, financial literacy, mental health awareness, self care, if you will, um, and then things of that nature. Things that are considered taboo, LGBTQ issues, all of that. You know, we talk about all of it uh, here at Third Eye Entertainment, and we have a model that we we often share with the public. It's called Manifest, Plan, Prepare. And it goes as the reason being is in order for those we believe if you want to achieve guaranteed success in life, one, you must manifest what it is that you want and speak it into existence like no other. Remove all the fear, all the doubt in your mind and replace it with that faith. Start writing it down on the paper. Make it till you make it like someone would say. Act like you like you got it even though you don't. And let nobody or nothing stop you and tell you anything different. Once you've got it in your mind, what you want to manifest into existence, start planning it out. Plan for how you are going to achieve or attack that that obstacle and overcome those obstacles that are going to come your way. Thirdly, you prepare for what it is that you are about to receive. And when we say prepare, that means to get your house in order. Go fix your financial house. Go get your credit fixed. Go fix your physical. If you you know unhealthy, go hit that gym. Go get your mental health in order. Go talk with a therapist, go fix your issues. Everything that you need to get in order, go, go mend those broken bridges, cut those people off who don't belong in your life. Go prepare for what it is that you are about to receive by, by pre prepping yourself as far as getting yourself fixed from the inside out. And once you do that, then surely it will come to you. It won't happen overnight, but again, once you stay fast and stay focused, it will surely come to you, you know, with this pandemic and being stuck in the house, what it has taught me and what it has taught the world is that, you know, or reminded us is that tomorrow's not promised. You know, you could be here one day and gone tomorrow. So for anybody out there that's feeling like it's their time to shine, to go after for whatever it is that they believe that they're meant to have, now is the time, you know. You got to reprogram your mind, mindset, and get that mind, mind frame that you're trying to get rich during the pandemic or die trying. Um, uh, I like to tell people, for me, this is my favorite saying, you know, you're either trying to have that come up like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D. There is no more in between, you know. So for me, I'm on the come up. And so, um, and then and with the book, our first product that we have with Third Eye Entertainment is the book, What is a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And before I go any further, I definitely like to say that this book does include a disclaimer. It's intended for a mature audience. Um, <clears throat> the way that I have set this book up is intended, it's written to inform and encourage thought provoking conversations about systemic racism and injustice in America through graphic but provocative illustrations. Um, it's done through uh, details of controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African American community. The way that I have set it up is within four main uh, categorized paradigms. We have historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. Um, and, and within those four main paradigms, there are sub-paradigms asking questions, you know, what if this happened, what if that happened, with its respective paradigm. Um, although the, the pictures are gritty and grimy, and one of the main points is also the 
to, to talk about, have a conversation about systemic racism, there's also a bigger picture to it. And if those who can muster to the end to hypothetical paradigm, you will see that the main gist of the book is talking about compassion, unity, and, and, man, and, and kindness for mankind overall. Because uh, um, we're all going through some things personally, you know, whether it be you know, our finances, personal issues, you know, sexual, sexual orientations, we're all going through something, you know, personally. So why not be kind and loving to one another while walking past them instead of passing judgment towards them just because of the way that they look? And so this, my, this is my contribution to society as far as, you know, having my voice being heard and, and giving my thoughts and opinions about it, and as well as uh, hoping to push the envelope to have people talk about these conversations. Because um, for another reason why I chose to go this route and, and talk about this issue in the controversial matter is because I'm tired of, you know, hearing people say, oh, racism doesn't exist. Oh, I don't think this is that. If it is a lie, it's because you guys keep talking about it. Well, okay, how about this? How about we, you know, flip the room for, for, for the road and then we flip the mirror into your face and see how do you like this? And if it makes you uncomfortable to see these type of images, then why is it okay or why is it justified when it happens to the African American community? And so, I, again, it's my hope that this, this, this is just to strike the match to start the conversation. But overall, it's also my hope and prayer that, that this book will help you know, be a part of, you know, the catalyst that, that plants the seed. I'm well aware change doesn't come overnight and it doesn't happen with just one person, you know, but what if, lady, what if this is the generation that plants the seed for the next or the next? Somebody has to try. And so, oh, if, if I need, yep. you know, if I need this earth, at least I've tried. And so, that's, that's, all, that's all we're about. That's all we're trying to do here at Different World. Third Eye Entertainment. Definitely, and I commend you for the work because that takes a lot of work to do. Um, Lady Bounce, you know, we were um, reading the expert samples of the book, and um, to me, it was reminiscent of a very, very, very profound movie that came out in the mid '90s. Um, white that? Man's Burden. Uh, white oh, Man's Burden. Yeah, White Man's Burden. Yeah. <laughs> um, or an, a movie that was one of my favorite movies from my time, um, Watermelon. Um, and, and I think that um, which, what's that one about? I never um, heard that one. Oh, God bless the dead, Melvin Ben Peebles. It was the first movie he directed. Um, it wasn't he didn't produce the movie or put it out himself. He was hired as a director. Um, okay. It's about uh, a guy that wakes up, a white male that wakes up black one morning, and he's living mm. in suburban America in the seventies. Um, and of course wife was outraged, his white children were outraged, his white neighbors were outraged, um, his co-workers that it is all white, he worked for an insurance company, were outraged, yeah, he did work in an insurance company, um, and it was about him adjusting to now being black, with his neighbors hating, his wife not understanding him, um, very, very, very classic movie, especially for its time, except that came out in, in the early 70s. Uh, it was one of the Melvin Van Peebles' first pieces of work. Um, and if you haven't seen any of his work besides... Yeah, I wrote it down. Watermelon, man. I'm, I'm going to go check that out. I definitely uh, like it. The Centurion Collection just released um, a Blu-ray collection of his movies. And like I said, God bless the dead. He just passed away last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he had a lot of, lot of deep movies like that. Uh, sweet, Sweet Back, Badass Song, um, which is a controversial movie. That was the first movie that he put out and directed. Um, mm -hmm. And, and he, he was a real thought-provoking. He was always pushing the boundaries. He, just like James Baldwin, was one of those people that had felt like they had to leave America um, because of how rough it was for them, especially being artists to a degree, and authors and poets and directors, and they both found their way in France. They both lived in France for years. Um, Melvin did come back and um, and launched a beautiful career. Um, the White Man's Burden was a movie in the mid '90s, which was basically showing a, a role reversal. Um, well, there were more successful Black people living in suburban America, and, and white people ones that went through the things that we've gone through since Middle Passage coming to America. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely needed. That's 95. Oh, yeah. So, I definitely want to look that. over 25 years ago. 
this isn't the first one, and I'm, I hope I won't be the last person to do something like this, but what's different about this book is that I have it, I'm also talking about the precedent time, things that's going on in our times now. So I also talk about things with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, you know, Mike Brown, Tamir Rice, you know, people of that nature. And so those are all, you know, the deaths of unarmed black people and the injustice that we are experiencing now in our time, you know, as opposed to what was shared within the white man burden or the watermelon man, they, they didn't talk about that. And so with what if controversial paradigm shift and precedent paradigm, it talks all about, it, it goes from even mentioning Obama as well as, you know, number 45. Uh, I never acknowledge him as, you know, <laughs> He's just number 45. That's the most respectful thing I can say. Number 45. So we talk about address him as well. Um, I'm sorry, I just read you guys a little excerpt as well. Like, um, so for for instance, uh, I have one paradigm in precedent paradigm um, called white lives matter, and then you'll say it's another explicit word, but it has a question: What is the frustration of all the injustice white people face in America? They formed a movement called White Lives Matter, just like how we formed the movement Black Lives Matter. And then you see the illustrations here saying, you know, hey, White Lives Matter. Yeah. That's you know, dope. Yeah, that well, this too, yeah, dope, dope, dope. For the people that are just listening and not seeing, it, it basically shows the role of us, which yeah. gives you a paradigm. Also, I have a book trailer available. And so if you guys go to my website, as well as a, a sample read, too. So you guys can go to my website, differentpeople.net, and check that out, too. But, um, yeah, the, the book is out now on pre sale. But that's just this little sample of what I'm talking about in the precedent paradigm. And so that's what makes this book different, as well as it's not only just meant to rub it in their faces or make the white man think, no, I'm, I'm talking to all people. Yeah. It's not just about white and black. This is for Everybody. all of us. Let's all come together. Let's, I, I'm personally, you know, fence. I'm tired. I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. Right. I'm tired of it. As a black woman, I'm tired of talking now, now about it. Now it's time to it's do the work. Home. Let's talk about, talk about yeah, now it's time. Let's talk about systemic racism. Yeah, yeah. Now it's time to do the work for the change. It's time to do the work for the change. Yeah. Now we're running out of time, but real quick before we get out of here, what is your favorite thing to do for self care? Um, meditating, chakra healing. Um, I love doing chanting, like Om, Yom, Lam, Ram. So that helps as well as breathing technique and reading keeps the mind strong in writing, doing affirmations. Uh, that's the most, uh, getting back into my exes. I'm not gonna lie with this book and, and promoting it. I fell off the, the mark, the little wagon with the work not. And so getting back in tune, you know, physically wise is important as well. I don't wanna sit here and present you guys as something I'm not, what you guys is what you get with me. And so I, I'm not perfect. I have my good days. I have my bad days, as well as, you know, talking with my therapist, you know, again, making sure my mental health is in check. It's very important to me as well, because if I don't, I can't thrive. I can't, you know, I have a nephew that I take care of, and he needs me here. And so I, I have to take care of myself. That's what it is as far as, like, self-care and self-love, being able to, you know, understand and, and realize, you know, when you need to recognize those signs and when you should take action. So that's a part of, you know, self-care and self-love as well, definitely, being able to recognize definitely, definitely. So that's my favorite thing to do to answer the question. Those definitely. things, it's not just so many. Many, yeah, many is good. Many, you gotta have your tools, gotta have your toolbox. Uh, now let's get into my favorite part of the show. <laughs> Brain science, science, science. <laughs> All right, so, so this week we're talking about uh, paradigm shifts and and the book that that we just were introduced to i cannot wait to to read it for real so I, it is in my cart and amazon come on payday but anyway so why is it important to put yourself in someone else's shoes so the brain science behind empathy basically is what we're talking about have you ever been in a position where you don't know how you feel about that situation well why not try to put yourself in someone else's shoes how easy is that for us to do Sometimes it's very hard, depending on the situation, depending on where you are. So, how do we do it? I'm glad you asked. Some people are able to channel their thoughts and feelings with ease, able to change how they think and feel with the snap of a finger. However, for other people, you have to really dig deep, to look deeply into their eyes and uncover their soul one piece at a time. You will learn their past, their values, what they value, and their view of the world. And hopefully, you will learn to accept it. That's the easy part. The hard part is using that new knowledge of someone else's mind and soul 
in order to begin to understand not only the person, but the way in which they see the world and thereby how they make their decisions. So to really get into their shoes, you need to try and see the world through their eyes. Start off with yourself. How do you think they would see you? What would you notice first? Your eyes, your smile, your personality, your past history? What would they look at you with, love or hate? Open your eyes as theirs. What do you think they see? Would they see the earth's flowers as a beautiful creation that smell divine? Or do they see them as just another organism in this world? Would they walk past you without blinking an eye or would they take the time to envelop themselves in the beauty of it all? So putting yourself into these simple situations as another person can tell you a lot about how that other person sees the world, how to react to situations and how they think moving forward. It does differ between friends and family and strangers because you have a different level of connection with those, those different people. So you need to reach inside yourself your own mind and try to be empathetic when you see someone else suffering instead of thinking that they deserve that suffering maybe think of how you would feel if you were suffering the same fate and so that is exactly what your book is about miss difference yes. Yes. so real quick before we get out of here tell the people where to find you and where to find your book yes so uh the book is available now on pre-sale uh on amazon and my website differentschool.net. I'm going to be real with you guys. If you go to Amazon, you're going to pay. It's, it's much more extensive. But um, if you go to my website, differentschool.net, it's on pre-sale now for $20. Um, okay. and so just with that, as well as you can check us out on Facebook, have our other social media handles as well. Um, if anybody out there listening and, and want me to be on the show and talk about you know certain issues, definitely go to my website and book me. I'm free of charge. I don't charge a thing. But I'm um, so grateful for you guys, Lady Bounce and Fake Spins, for having me. Truly appreciative. And everybody out there, you know, thank you guys for watching and tuning in. Uh, you know, don't forget whatever it is in life that you want to go after. You have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. It will then come to you surely. You know, difference world. Come and learn. Word up. Word up. Word thanks, up. Thanks, thank you, thank you for being a part of the show. Um, hopefully people will cop the book. It's I I can't yes. wait to check it out. Um, and once you start traveling again, you have to come up to Dayton. We have a big African-American cultural festival, which we took place part of uh, this year. And uh, they have an author's corner where they let authors come and, and, and work they work and okay. show their books to the world. Um, that takes place in August. The uh, next one's going to be the last weekend of August of 2022. Um, yeah, so sure I'm looking to do a book that. tour, so definitely I can. I can yeah. Hopefully, if it's not willing, just depending on how the pandemic rolls next year, I'm yeah, looking right, to do a book right. tour uh, starting March 2022, up and down the East Coast, all the way down to the South, uh, visiting you know 35 prospective universities in 15 states. So, God willing, if we're, we're if the pandemic allows, uh, we'll definitely be doing a book tour, and uh, I definitely will look that up in Ohio for August of next year. But again, thank you guys so much for having me. Much, much, much appreciated. Thank you. God bless you. And once again, you can find us also on all social media, where it be social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, IG, and even on TikTok. You can watch and listen to our show on YouTube, and you can listen to it on wherever you find your favorite podcast. It's your boy, Picket Fence. I'm Lady Bounce. We out of here. Peace. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope y'all enjoyed listening to my audio interview with the podcast, Fly With Us Podcast. Definitely a big shout out to Lady Bounce and Picket Fence for having me on their podcast. Be sure to check them out. That link is in the bio. Definitely hit up their YouTube channel and be sure to show them some love by subscribing to their channel and checking them out. So uh, that, that was much appreciated for them having me on their show. As you guys can see, we had a very good time, you know, just talking about life and, of course, my new book. Dun, da, da, da. What if a controversial paradigm shift? Again, this is a book that was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in, in America. And, you know, just that conversation that needs to be had and, you know, the envelope that's pushed, you know, by your girl, yours truly different. So also, again, you guys, be advised that this book is intended for a mature audience only. I am getting a lot of mixed reviews about this. Of course, this is what it's about, you know, having that conversation. Um, and so with that being said, let me just say this for those out there, you know, who, who don't like what it is that I'm saying or showing you guys and that's saying, oh, this itself is racist. 
Yeah, you're right. It is. <laughs> this is absolutely true. This what the book is is, is about racism. Uh, these events and these these you know issues that have occurred are very true and historical events that have happened in the African American community. The only difference is now is that in the book is happening to white people instead of black people. And, you know, of course, when, you know, that upset section of white folks that are upset about it, you know, they ask the question, you know, you know, this is, are they state? Oh, that's disgusting. Or, you know, how can somebody write something like this? Well, let me ask you guys this question. How can somebody do such a thing like this? These are actual true events that have occurred in America. And so, again, if it's not okay for, you know, you guys to see illustrations of white people being lynched or, you know, beaten up by a black angry mob, then, you know, why at some point in time is it okay or is it justified that it happened to us in the past and in some sort of way it's still happening to black people, unarmed black people, when we're getting shot and killed by police officers, even when we comply. And so that's my question, you know, if it's not okay for you guys to see these illustrations and, and then you guys turn around on the other hand and somehow justify the fact that, you know, a black person died, you know, at the hands of a police officer, even if they were unarmed, even if they comply, you know, they still lost their lives. Why is that justified? Why is that okay? You know, and so this is the point of the book to not just put it in your face, even though, you know, <laughs> it does hold the mirror up to your face, but it's more so to ask that question, to have that conversation that needs to be had and ultimately, hopefully, plant that seed, you know, for systemic change. You know, even if this book goes nowhere fast, you know, nothing beats a failure but a try. And my grandkids won't be able to ask that question, well, what did I do? And I can't, and I won't be able to tell them nothing. I can say I tried by writing this book, by having the conversations, by, by, not passing judgments from others that I don't know nothing about the background story, where they come from, you know, and just practicing love and kindness to them. That's how I've tried to, or at least attempted to try, you know. And so hopefully, you know, I'm inspiring others and encouraging others, you know. Even if right now it's in the beginning stages, you know, the, the, I'm planting a seed, who knows, years from now, you know, somebody may look back at this video and see this video, and it may be something that they need to hear. And so I don't look at something that I am doing right here and now and expect for it to take off soon as I do it. I'm not expecting to go viral immediately. Nothing happens overnight. Those people that you see, you know, that's getting YouTube famous just that quick, they they've been doing that, you know, and so it's just they're just not receiving their their due. And so with this book, even as such, it's been less than a year since it's been published, but it's still you know, it's getting, you know, it's doing what it's supposed to do, you know, even slowly but surely, you know, two years from now, you know, people all over the world is going to know about this book. They're going to be trying to make, you know, many TV series about this book. So that's why, again, manifest, plan, and prepare for what it is that you want in life and that it will surely come to you guys. And so close out with that being said, moving on to the next section, you know, in difference well, uh, be on the lookout for, you know, my uh, video again, um, the new, my, my new video I got, I uh, hope you guys enjoy listening to or not listening, <laughs> watching my video. I just posted with free your minds and your chakras with follow. Hope you guys, you know, listen to that and enjoy that and, 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 those who are interested, you know, do some more exploration on your own and, and, and just find out what works best for you guys. Other than that, you know, uh, definitely go to differenceworld.net and check out, you know, other events and things that I got going on in Difference World. And also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate every single one of you guys. It's not like I got a million followers yet, but I, for those who are following me now, I truly, truly appreciate it. And it's, it's much, 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 and you guys are not letting it control you guys and you control it. You're the captain of the ship. Again, remember, it's okay to not be okay, but don't just sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Go talk with somebody. Go go pick up a hobby. Go do something that frees yourself from that mental bondage. You're in control. Nobody else. 
Okay, remember that. So in close out, you guys, don't forget whatever it is in life that y'all want, y'all got to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you. Different 12. Come on, learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.